Um, I know the monetizing is coming soon. Hey, just keep on <laughs> 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 so we, we can, can get, get coffee you here. <laughs> yo, except yo, here, yo, yo. Okay, I did. We're gonna it. keep it. We're <laughs> gonna keep that. We're not gonna cut that part. <laughs> <gonna keep> <laughs> Yo, yo! This is Gremlin. This is Kane. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Four Play podcast, yeah. season three, episode three, <laughs> four, three, ready, three. three. Yeah, we missed a week because we, we we decided to play oh, soccer yeah, instead. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! The match day vlog was crazy. Match day vlog was crazy. Also, shout out for the love on the match day vlog. Like, I didn't expect people to actually like get into it like that. We'll get into it. We'll yeah. get into it. We'll have a little yeah. review about that. But, but also, as you can see, yeah. we have a very special guest today. Very special. My brother, Nate, the curator. <laughs> yeah. Allow us to introduce thank you. you. Thank allow you. Us, thank allow you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, how are you? Good, my friend. Bless, bro. Bless, bless, bless. Thank bless. you for coming, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'm yeah. a bit in pain, but yeah, I just mm. came out of church, so it's going to be a blessed interview. But you're in pain for other reasons, eh? Yeah, yo, ish. Yeah, so. Overweight and retired. Whoa. <laughs> no. What happened and yesterday? And retired, retired. <laughs> retired, retired. <laughs> you did okay yesterday. So, yeah, we did the Cape Town City uh, fan, fan day, day yeah, exhibition yeah, match yesterday. Match. Um, really good. What did you think about the game? Um, It was fun, bro. Yeah. It, 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 I enjoyed myself. Um, Just the fact that they had like two PSL Oaks, I think. Yeah. Um, Clayton and yeah, uh, Clayton. What's his name? Well, they had Dan Keaton uh, as a coach. They had... Uh, no, what's this, the one in the middle? Um, they just retired. Oh, Lips. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So it was kind of unfair to that extent. <laughs> yeah, he was and great, won, bro. Because you guys went to penalties. Yeah. Oh, ah, we, man. We lost. Yo. Oh, so mm. this is how this game started, right? Solid teams. Both teams were solid, I think. Yeah, it was good. Funky was, was, Funky was captain up front. 100%. Striker. Yeah. yeah, you started up front, eh? Uh, yeah, whole game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, solid backline, like genuinely solid teams. But bro. you guys considered three. What do you mean solid we backline? We scored three yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Paul yeah. had a good goal. That was yeah, amazing. screamer. Nabila Galant again, yeah, yeah, yeah. two yeah, seasons yeah. in a row. She's um, now nah, she's nasty. Paul also texted me like. What was the, the 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 Love Island guy, the rugby player's brother? Give me started. Yeah, on this guy, um, bro. the Love Island guy. <coughs> we had fun how, with him. how are you seven foot nine and you won't be in the box for any corners he takes, the, cor- <laughs> he takes the corners <laughs> bro <laughs> did he take the corner he t- but it was a good corner he took the corner yo yo that was crazy um, it's like what's it though Peter Chick also, he literally Peter Crouch, Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch. seven foot nine huge, is crazy he yeah, is huge. gigantic like I never knew his name until they said his name was Nathan I yeah was, I used to just love Island <laughs> yeah, okay Nathan. love Island Nathan Gomazula. So he definitely didn't share the, the, Why the he sports say fine, with DNA. Bro? Oh, different I don't know. Yeah, different, different different I think his mom got married after they had him. Oh, so he's okay, the oldest okay. one. Oh, he's the, the older. One, yeah. oh, okay. Okay. So his mom got the married and then they did the fine work. Got you, got okay. you, got you. Okay. But yeah, fun game. Um, went to penalties. I scored. Yeah, screamer did as you, well. Did you, did you um, kick? Damn. Huh? Wow. That's crazy. Let's not get it's into it's it. It's I told you, let's not get into not it. Not gonna lie, Ang hasn't been on a good run lately. He had a, he had a shocker at, at faculty kick oh. at faculty FC on we'll Friday. I'll show you the clips. Kenny, Kenny's a professional shit talker. We know nah, this now, guys. Nah, I'm man. confused. So I'll just. Who's Ang? No, no, no. He's <laughs> Ang. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's yeah. Ang. Yeah, he's yeah, Ang. Yeah, you know. Pochi, man. That's how I know him. Pochi. Nah, he's Ang because he's like, how, how many years you my senior now? Uh, how old are you? Six years. Six yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, technically, Funk is Unk too. Funky yeah. Unk. But you, you are Unk. You're yeah. Uncle. Um, yep. He's been Uncle. I think <laughs> we played um, <laughs> academy football together. Yeah. And then Calvin was our captain. I think because he was the only white boy. Real. But also leadership. <laughs> leadership from the back. Who was it? Matthew Booth back in the days. Hey, no, yo. there was another one, dude. Who was the other one? South African. No man, I'm, no. Talk, no, I'm talking about in the South End squad with us. No, 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 no. I was the, the only, only one. I was the only one in that whole league, bro. <laughs> <laughs> From under seven to to Castle, I was the only white guy in the whole Glossy <laughs> Park league. The only white, bro. The only one. That was crazy. Crazy, crazy, Fun crazy. Times, yeah, yeah, really good time. So that's that's how that's how me and Nate know each other. From I mean. F- 15 already mm. like half our yeah, lives yeah, we've yeah. known each other bro so yeah, yeah. yeah we go back a long States, time i think we did the o to one together myself and jody which is his tight friend and then when jody you see that calvin is back from the states and then that's how he's, you are i'm so sorry apologies 
And we played Calvin opening set for like we for like months, bro. I came back from America, Yo, bro. I look. I was playing. We played I was playing man three p.m. Set. That was crazy. To like five people. Me, no, I had to. Bro. Forgive me, bro. Yeah, it's part of the journey. 100%. You can't go from. That's crazy. Hundred percent. Fresh bro. out the block to twelve p.m. And yeah, man. A.m.s, nah. It 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 made what me time, who bro. I was. What yeah, time. yeah. Talking what talking time. about um. You guys knowing each other from a young age. Um, Ank and I. Oh, let me, let me, okay, let me stop calling this one. <laughs> Ank on this episode. Uh, Krim and I like had a couple conversations like on car rides and stuff, and you would always tell me that you've always had a sense of like, for lack of a better term, like diva about you, like from that age already. Like you've always been like a firm, like and assertive, like to how you approach mm. things and how you go about it, and like that no nonsense attitude, man. Hundred mm. percent. I think it's it's built on. Um, uh, pure identity if i think brand related um, i was fortunate enough when it comes to my dj uh to attend soul candy and study there and i think uh, my foundation was built on like concrete coming out of the hands mm. of crazy white boy blanca so i understood um the industry with, with regards to djing uh, music producing and just brand uh building a brand in general so i knew what it takes i knew what it is to have a pure identity and i stuck with it yeah because a lot of people perceive it as like a negative sense is like oh this guy just does mm. what he wants or he says what he wants and he moves how he wants but uh, i think a lot of people don't know where it actually stems from and 100 I, I i can't i can't accept that i, I had uh, some sort of um pride and ego in my younger years um um i think it comes with like the inexperience you know mm. um and have i ever armed anyone with with my attitude i can ask for forgiveness now because i'm i'm in a in a righteous place to do that but i think um we all learn you know and i think it also closed a lot of doors for me because someone once told me that relationships over money you know and because you have the the ego the you know the this mr who you are because i knew i was special i knew i was different yeah and i had one up on everyone because mm-hmm. i thought you know when i started this thing with it yeah but ish as the years went by and life happened, I understood that relationships are so important over than a little ego and money, basically. I think when you when you are that age and, and you get that sort of um, attention, <coughs> especially when it comes from a, a sense of uh, self-confidence, yeah. you know you're good and you know that you are special, as you say. You have a unique offering in terms of what you do and it's it's not it's not delusional like it's the reality is that yeah, yeah. you know you're not getting booked and 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 playing all over the country for no reason yeah so when you're young i think it's very hard to handle that sort of um the 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 your ego can get, get inflated very easily and i mean i think we've all been there bro i've been in those situations where i've been you know spoken out of turn or, or maybe just speaking from uh, an immature you know perspective yeah. um so I was, when I yeah was, i think from the ages 21 to 24 i think that was like you know a uh, university when i had this thing um, and that's when we curated a lot of things like oh to one so we had this chip on our shoulder you know mm. and this ah we were doing this ish but was that if, I, if i ever offended anyone with with my attitude yeah. or ego back then because pride is like it's a hectic sin you know and i feel like um now that i'm in the position um and that i grew retired and just like if i can just be a light to someone right now i think like yeah that that you 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 don't want to tarnish relationships yeah <coughs> with having one up on some sort of pride or ego so yeah of can, course can you do can you like refine like your your version of retirement because like obviously when the news dropped that you that you no longer or that you're putting you you putting so let's sorry away. let's let's just set this up for in, in case you know <laughs> you've been living under a rock any anybody watching now yeah literally um let's let's just bring it back to a couple months ago um from our perspective we did mention on the past before uh, uh, on the pod before <laughs> um a couple months ago you you had just come from dubai or doha, doha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Mind you've been releasing music. Mind you, that like two, three days earlier, he posted a pic with Tira yeah. and someone else. And I'm like... Like, when was, was this who roundabout? Who was up? This was... March? April. So April. I initially retired from the industry on the 21st of June. But I think what people don't know, two months prior to that, I committed myself to Christ, you know? Mm. So just think about, like, me in my spiritual journey mm. and not being obedient to my calling and i was fighting it and it's crazy like um 
how uh, it brings me to a point on that day, 21st of June, where I fully had to surrender, you know. Um, yeah, so me retiring, I am retired, don't worry, I'm not coming back. Nah, <laughs> there's no hope of. Uh, so you said, don't worry. Yeah, so <laughs> the, <laughs> they said, no, no funk at the cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. so the Bible says, like, um, that you, in the book of Luke, that you, Jesus speaks that you need to deny yourself. You know, um, fully to become a disciple of him and pick up your cross daily, and I think that was truly my <coughs> where I'm at in my uh, in my life right now. To find my purpose in Christ, I l- I had to die, you know, as envy and you know. So mm. yeah, I'm that's basically. So t- for two months, bro, I've been fighting it, <coughs> and I'm not playing. I'm not playing like small gigs. I'm, as you can say, I'm playing international mm. stuff. I'm playing. I've been. I think. This thing has been planted to me like a year ago mm, prior yeah, yeah. to this, and I've been fighting it for a very long time. So it's not a s- like <coughs> a, a spontaneous, you yeah. know, it just happened overnight. It's 100%. It's been on your mind. It's been on heavy on your heart. I think heavy. I'm talking about we were flying to Angola, myself and my, um, my content, Oak Mike, and even like just having the conversation on, on how we saw the gospel and um, like that four-hour flight to Angola and just speaking and sharing the word. And like, I think then it was like, it was like, you know when the spotlight is shown on you that this is the way you need to go you know and we we've been bad i've been battling it personally for a very long time okay. um and you know i've been spiritual like i come from a spiritual strong spiritual household yeah father's a pastor like you know i come with very like <coughs> like heavy weights in 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 when it comes to spirit your spirit, upbringing yeah 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 yes yeah, yeah. so i know what's right I yeah, always yeah. tell the pastors, kids, hey, you know what's right. I don't <laughs> need to preach to you anything. Mm. So I know what's right, you know, but, <clears throat> and it wasn't fulfilling for me, bro. Mm, yeah. Like as much as it's the money and everything else, like, <clears throat> it wasn't fulfilling for me. It's crazy. And yeah, so for two months, I'm fighting this thing. Yeah. And then. This is after, after you had committed So I committed life. myself yes. to Christ. This is before the 21st of June, two yes. months prior. So just think of it, bro. Like I'm in and out of these dark spaces. I consider it dark. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so, but yeah. No, no. It's it's and it's not <coughs> to say that you have to compare it to anybody else's. It's your version of of uh, what you were going through, and that's all that matters. So just think of it for two months, bro. Like committed myself to Christ. Mm. I'm in and out of these spaces, in and out of planes, playing the best clubs in the world, uh, and bro, I'm I'm I don't smoke. I don't drink. Like it's yeah. Like what am I doing here? You know, um, and. This is the amazing part, my brother. Like, <coughs> someone came to um, came to see me, and he says, Nathan, this is crazy. He says, Nathan, <coughs> back in the days, I used to drop my daughters off at the shows, and then I used to just pop in for like a half an hour. And then he tells me that he has this severe sickness. He doesn't know when's his last day on earth. Like he's He's just living, bro. He doesn't know when his last days on, on earth is. And I'm like, and he's like, your seeing you just perform gave me so much hope. Was inspiring and such a positive figure. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Then the Holy Spirit drops this thing on me like, Nathan, at the time when you were envy, someone just bought a ticket to your show for a nice time. That's it. I was only a positive figure that dressed cool, just a nice time, you know? Yeah. I could be an inspiration to a certain extent, you know, colored excellence, you can achieve, just a nice time, basically. And then the Holy Spirit says, now with me, having Jesus, bro, I can offer you a ticket to eternity, brother. Do you know how crazy that is? Because at that time, this guy, he doesn't know when he's lost there on earth, is. I could only offer him a nice time. If I had Jesus at that time, bro, in his situation just think of it i could offer him eternity bro i could offer him christ so that is my testimony bro and yeah like my calling is hectic i was denying it for a very long time and the lord just works in mysterious ways where i had to literally just deny myself to find my purpose in christ bro yeah yeah on that note like obviously you 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 were a full-time entertainer and obviously transitioning now to to net the curator so Again, uh, if it comes across as personal, you can let me know. But how do you supplement that income now? Like, what what is your plan, like moving forward? And obviously, you're you're married good or you guys are engaged. Good, good question. Yeah, I am engaged. Shout out to my love of my life. Congrats, <laughs> congrats, congrats, congrats. She's congrats. in the building right out. now too. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, bro. But it's 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 it, um. I think like my partner has been. Uh, very support. I think it's faith, bro. Mm. I think it's faith. I think when it comes to why I went with Nate the Curator, like I always, 
I was I was curating so much for the world also, bro. I was behind so many things, started so many things. We kicked off so many careers. Like I curated so many platforms um, for people, you know. So, uh, so, so the so what I was using in the so people ask me what is my instrument, you know. Yeah. Someone asked me what is my instrument. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. I can play any instrument. I can play drums, guitar, anything. I'm I'm a musician. And then something just drops on my spirit that. Bro, my instrument is my creativity, my mind. That's how Envy Funk was started. I took a talent, I took an art, I saw the opportunity in the market, mm. and if you it wasn't it for my creativity, yeah. there wouldn't be Envy Funk. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? So coming back to like income, is, bro, it was very hard for me, especially like <clears throat> I was drawn to a point, bro. I know what it used to have money, and now I can fully say, and I'm not shy to say that I know what it used to have nothing. Mm. You know, and I think um, that comes with it, bro. It comes with obedience, like denying yourself to that thing. Like he needs to break you in every way possible. I was broken financially, mentally, spiritually to a point where I just had to surrender myself to Christ and fully find my purpose. You know, so this is one thing. I, this is how amazing the God that I serve is, bro. He says he will never forsake you, and he also says that you don't lack. You know, with him. Bro, I haven't kicked for a while, forever. And Since June. And I haven't let, bro. And that's how that's that that's the God we serve, my brother. And it's crazy to a certain extent how much I appreciate the finer things now in life. Yeah. I appreciate peace. I appreciate joy. I appreciate opening my eyes and just say thank you lord for another day because it's another blessing i appreciate the roof over my head food on my table shoes on my feet because in the world i've been living over bro everything yeah, i was in prison yeah. for a birthday i was in prison I, I was never home you know so i just appreciate that 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 joy that i have now in christ bro so yeah like i'm i'm not money driven or anything right now like mm. um just knowing that my eternity with jesus and is and my purpose in Christ is so much greater yeah. to, a, to a point where Nate the curator like the, it was also like my I think it was last week Sunday when my uncle takes me he's like do you know when you called from God I'm like yay and my, uncle, my uncle's a pastor but I'm like yo this man said I'm calling this but you know old people first text and then they bring you know <laughs> and then he says like just like look around you like look at your friends look at your followers and look at are you you are losing I lost every brand deal every circle in the world no one i don't I literally i lost everything you know and it's crazy Wait, like when did you lose this when are you saying what like, like literally like, journey, like because the last couple when months. i li- bro literally when i retired i had no connection with any of my worldly circles bro was not this even so, was this your choice or was no, this, this is like literally this is this them is not even okay. reaching out to me yeah, and say okay. you yeah. so you got baptized congratulations like it's crazy yeah. how you lose all these things you know wow. and they say like like on this journey it's a very lonely journey you know and now i understand it um uh, but i'm just grateful bro i'm grateful that my, my purpose is, is is so much more now um because now i can offer you jesus and not just a nice time yeah. not just mm-hmm. a positive figure i can offer you eternity now and that's where i'm at bro how has it been with like like your following and obviously you have a fan base and you have people who who love and adore you for what you do you know how is how has it been like connecting with them now in the space that you have do you still connect to them like how's yeah it it's, it's <coughs> i think it's even worse now going into public because i always had public anxiety like going to the mall you know people taking pictures and I think like it's you would never say that, eh? Yeah, no, no, you, not at all. Like I, I think maybe internally think you had that. Like mentally, I can yeah. switch on to like superstar yeah. mode and stuff. Yeah, and I understand when it comes to like it's my brand. It's like the positive. So it's ego. like an alter ego it's kind like of thing. I had to switch on, yeah. but it's like yo, bro. Like it, it, it literally, like it's crazy. It's scary, you mm. know. But um, I'm grateful, bro. I think I've lost a lot. But I've gained so much in Christ, with even like with regards to following. Yeah. Uh, I can see I'm losing a lot of followers whenever I speak Jesus. But I see that I'm gaining so much more. Like my insights are crazy, bro. Because my message is, there's a purpose in my message yeah. now, you know. So they actually stick and listen instead so of just And scrolling. people want to see people is attracted to it. And the fact that I can preach the gospel. And I, I think with... The, uh, Bro, like it's crazy. I'm. Um, it's my tenth year now. It would have been my tenth yeah. year, Sylvie Funk. And this is a crazy testimony that I wanted to make history this year and fill up Grand Arena, seven thousand people. First DJ to ever do it this side. I don't think there was ever a DJ in Cape Town. Not a DJ, no. And that was me, crazy. Yo, coming back September, bro, the ninth month. 
I wanted to do Grand Arena, NV Funk, 10 years of NV Funk, first DJ. You would have done it now, in this September, month, yeah. Bro, and you know, the ninth month, and the baby in the womb for nine months, it's just a new breakthrough, bro. And I, I've been telling my <coughs> my fiance, my friends, like, just crazy, I'm coming out in this ninth month, you know, with my content and everything. Uh, fully because I've been in my wilderness for a very long time where I had to build character in Christ, you know, strengthen myself there, but the ninth month. So, yeah, so I want to do make his story. And then Jesus made it about his story, my brother. <laughs> That's crazy, <laughs> hey. <laughs> like, yo, Bars. relax. It's my time now, so, yeah. yeah. Coming back to what my uncle told me, that losing the followers and losing the friends, like, that's when you truly know that you're called, you know. Um, and I'm just grateful, man. And I think, like, what I, di- I did for 10 years without Jesus, just think about the amazing things that I'm going to do now with Christ in my life, bro. So, yeah, but coming back, no more envy funk. Yeah. I wanted to make history this year, but it's all about the history, bro. 100%, yeah. bro. I mean, I think from our perspective, when when we first heard the news, it it didn't make sense to us. Yeah, uh, But I th- we both realized there was a deeper story to it. And yeah. that's why we always wanted to have this conversation. I think I texted you straight away. I said... Um, yeah. really I'm happy for you. That's We're not going to talk uh, yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. but we will have this conversation. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it wasn't even a matter of, yo, let's talk on the podcast. It was yeah. just like, yeah, 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 we're yeah. going to have this chat, bro. Because mm. if, I, if I had to refer it the same situation maybe to myself, I do consider myself religious. I have a, a close relationship with God. Um, but I, I, I don't have that overwhelming feeling, mm. you know, of literally dropping my my entire career mm. and somewhat my identity because a lot of who i am Essential half of my I life i've been djing you know this uh, i am a dj that so is that is my you know yeah. what i'm saying and i almost think to myself like at the heights that i am now it would be like crazy to drop everything where you were is you know you were it <laughs> There, w- there was no one else that was carrying that flag of of, mm. of what you were doing to the extent that you were doing for Cape Town, um, for the uniqueness of your your the performance, and to just say you know yeah. it's done. Um, I had a feeling it was not a a, a, a spontaneous thing. I had I a feeling it was it was coming yeah. for a while. Yeah. So just think about it, bro. Like let you like as I said, like two months prior. Yeah. Like I commit myself to Christ and these. Um, and it's crazy, like I went through this wilderness, bro, like I was still holding on to this thing of like, um, okay, you know what, Lord, I've done amazing things in the world, um, I'm going to become a gospel artist, mm. you know, I'm going to, yeah. I want to do the music. So I that was the, tra- yeah, it was the was transition, we the were still staying yeah. in music. I was, so this was like, transitioning. so literally like yeah. the Bible says, do not lean onto your own understanding, you know, yeah. and that was me, bro, I was like, I was doing amazing in the world. How can I know what it is to sell us, Lord? I'm gonna bring do this for you. I'm mm. gonna do, bro. This God that I serve doesn't share his light with anyone, bro. Um, it's either you, you you can't share light and darkness because there was a point where I was trying to become a gospel artist. I was asking like spiritual leaders, hey, like, so what do you think about this? Where do I draw the line with like secular and you know, yeah. if coming out, uh, wanting to perform gospel, preach the gospel, festivals, whatever. Where do I draw the line? And know a lot of sometimes people say things to like you know warm your spirit to like comfort you like you know mm. you yeah, are amazing yeah, then you are amazing in back in the days in the world like you can do it for Jesus now you you know um, mm. he's like someone told me that um, um, in a certain amount of years you can only reach thirty thousand people um, preaching the gospel in a specific area. It's like Nathan, you have the opportunity to play your festival and the gospel will reach 30,000 people in a half an hour. Mm. And I was like, yo, that's what I wanted to hear. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so it fuels me, it fuels me. And I'm it validates bro, you. For three yeah. months, um, I have an album ready. I have, I know I'm like, um, let's get the art. I'm ready for bookings. Bro, nothing activates for me, bro. Nothing activates. I couldn't rehearse with a band. Crazy, bro. I couldn't re- he, he puts me in a situation where I can't rehearse with a band. Um, just it wasn't f- the music wasn't fulfilling. I was doing it because it was my understanding. Yeah. I knew what it is to make the music. I knew what it is to put the music together. So, y- did you feel like okay, I'm I'm 
I'm going to shed myself of envy funk and this the secular sort of world yeah, yeah, yeah. with all this temptation of you know everything that comes in this industry and let's still use my talent that God has blessed me Crazy. with but <laughs> in a way that praises him Yo. and I'm still going to do this and now you're following that based on your own understanding because that's 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 yeah, my talent exactly that's what yeah. my soul he's given it to you yeah, yeah. Can, that's what i can do and now you're going down this path and, and nothing's working out bro for you. and i'm like he activates nothing within three months i'm i want to finish an album i finished i probably have two albums gospel laying there bro um i put out one track i'm like but nothing is i'm doing this because i can do it it's my understanding of what i was doing in the world mm. you know bro I'm looking for venues. I want to start performing and you know, getting the people. And it activates nothing for me, bro. And I remember there was one mo- Monday morning. I just woke up. It brings me back to that exact point where he's my only source to rely on. And I'm like, Lord, you know what? Yeah, I am. With all my gifts, with all my talents, use me. Show me, lead me, and I'll follow. And at that exact point, bro, we checking out my wedding venue. Uh, and we speak to this lady. We we come in here for a wedding venue, bro. And the lady speaks to us. And we spoke about the wedding for like five minutes, for four hours. She's just speaking into myself and my fiance. And she confirms again this thing of denying yourself, bro. To find your purpose in Christ. And something the Holy Spirit just warms me. Because this was that, confir- that confirmation that I asked that morning on my knees. Crying, saying, Lord, yeah, I am. And I... That at that point, my brother, that's where I just fully denied. I sold my dicks. I sold. I was I like, the dick. <laughs> 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 sold the dicks. I I just yeah, cause like seeing my dicks in my room was like you know oh I'm gonna still get to that. It was just like I'm gonna come. Oh you know? yeah, so yeah. It was like that like was it there? Yeah. And yeah. I had to literally let go of everything to find my purpose in Christ. And coming back to my purpose, the Lord has put this thing on me. For years back at it, bro. Mm. Planted exactly what I must do and my purpose as a k- so this is my testimony if I can share it with you. When it comes to obedience, brother. So Tony Evans tells the story of the Pope and the Uber driver, eh? And he says the Pope is landing. The Pope must give this um a very important um speech at Parliament. Sharp Uber driver gets the trip to take the Pope to um, Parliament. Uber driver pulls up. Pope is in the back seat. Uber driver is driving. But now he's driving 60. And the Pope is like, hey, chief, like 8 o'clock I need to be mm. at the Parliament. I have something special to get over to, to, to government. And the, drive, the Uber driver says that, sir, unfortunately, I have two fines already. If I get a third one, I'll get locked up. I'm going to jail. And the, Uber, and the Pope is like, oh, okay. Uber driver drives, 60 at ease, and now the Uber, now the Pope is getting like very agitated and he's like, hey chief, come on man, at least 80, because <laughs> 8 o'clock I have to be at Parliament, I have a very anu- uh, important announcement to deliver to government. Uber drivers again, so unfortunately I have a wife, I have kids, I have a family, I have two fines, the third one, if I get it, I'm going to jail, I can't go, he stays. And now the Pope is a red brother. And okay, 60. Po- Pope says, hey, chief, pull over here, man. You get the back seat. <laughs> I'm going to drive. drive. I'm just imagining the Pope say chief. <laughs> 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 so the Pope says, hey, come on, chief. Back seat. Ooh, Pope drives. And the Pope is driving, bro. He's, he's in right. 120, 160. He's, he's red. He needs to get 8 o'clock. He needs to be at Parliament. Chumps a robot and woo, woo, woo. Traffic officers pull him over. Two, uh, two, two cops. Pope pulls over. Traffic officer behind him. Crazy story, bro. Just listen to this. Uh, traffic officer comes to, to, to the window. You know that? Mm-hmm. Rose down the window. He sees, hey, he's crooks. Uh, he just looks to the back. He looks and he walks away. Nice colleague is like, hey, chief. Why are you, where you why, going? Why are you not giving this guy a fine? Who's in the car? Uh, is it the celebrity? Is it, ah, yo. Uh-uh. More than that. No, 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 no. <laughs> who, he's like, so who is it? Who is it? The president? He's like, yo. Uh, yo. Uh, uh, 
you know, is the gangster who 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 is in the front seat that you're not giving this guy a fine? And the cop is like, hey, bro, I don't know who's in the back seat, but the Pope is his driver. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so just think of this, bro. This is my testimony to a point where. Like, I was in the driving seat for 10 years and I had to be so obedient to take yeah. the back seat. And now Jesus is <laughs> in my, in, in my driver's seat. Yeah. So just think how powerful and how blessed you are if someone pulls you over and your pure identity in your vehicle, the person driving it is Jesus, bro. So that is my obedience. I literally had to take the back seat. I let envy gone and just let him be in my driver's seat just surrendering completely bro, yeah and that's amazing i have christ now bro yeah in my driver's seat so I do you th- think you, you were trying to control sort of your life and 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 you were saying that you know what i you had this overwhelming feeling of of having to to move in a different direction but you were still trying to you know force the certain direction you and you were taking control of your life and and a big thing especially with 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 religion is surrendering to god's plan for your life you know and when you were uh, uh, sort of not following that yeah, yeah, and yeah. going against it that's when everything else was everything working goes against you he, yeah he puts me in situations again where he's my only source to rely on my brother mm-hmm. and it's crazy when i was in the world matthew 6 verse 33 I th- correct me if i'm wrong it says the, the bible says seek him first and live righteously and everything else will be added unto you. When I was in the world, bro, we were just seeking toys, shows, yeah, woman, money. We just wanted to be seeking all these things. And afterwards, thank you, Jesus, for the successful yeah. show. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You know, after everything, mm. it was always thank you. You know, and it's crazy. Like the verse says that seek him first. Now that I seek him first. But this is the important part, the living righteously. Because people want to seek him, but don't live righteously. Mm. Because the Bible says, seek you, seek him first and live righteously and everything else will be added unto you. So think about this and you asking me how I am surviving with regards yeah. to money. Bro, because I seek him first, I live righteously now and everything else is added unto me, my brother. So let me ask you this, Nate. Um, we, you sitting next to two DJs now that are... You know, in Thanks I wouldn't for say saying Nate. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. it's my my, my go to my go to is funk. I've called you funk yeah, for fifteen yo, years. You, thank so, you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate so, you. So you know, you're sitting next to us now. We we we're doing well in our careers, um, and we still live in this world. And do you think that there is still a way for for us to live righteously, as you say? while living in this world and carrying out our because you know maybe my calling from god is to to carry on what i'm doing Mm. in this world and just not necessarily have to uh give into the temptations of this world but still live (laughs) righteously and still you know affect people's lives positively through through my talents and through kane's talents what we so at that point day this is coming if if i can only be a testimony because i was in that situation to you so uh when I when speaking to my spiritual mother, uh, shout out to Heidi, um, and this is uh, exact words because I was at that point coming back. You guys were playing the festivals, you guys are doing, and I, and I was like, okay, I'm coming back as a gospel artist. I have the network, uh, the, the relationships to get on stages to do something different, you yeah. know, um, and declare the gospel. Like you know, I was trying to go the on my way and mm. smooth it down with, and just taking the gospel. And, and I think people saw that as as possibly something like uh funk. Maybe you giving up on gom. Yeah, you're yeah, the king yeah, of yeah, Gorm yeah, and yeah, now yeah, you yeah, yeah. maybe selling out to go the Amma yeah, piano yeah, yeah, way yeah, yeah. and the gospel way you know 100%. that's how people can perceive things bro 100% but ugh, bro was definitely not my calling I was just leaning on to my own understanding yeah. but then coming back to she was like I can perform the gospel you know half an hour declare Christ for example let's say daisies 30,000 mm. people mm. sharp as soon as you done with your gospel and distraction boys walk or tira walks on then ah, bye yeah <laughs> so my boy that's why i say my 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 the the uh, especially as hip-hop djs bro like, know, like yo, you guys man. coming hard you know yeah. don't stop t- <laughs> i mean that's still that's still pc bro i think there's worse <laughs> music than no, that <laughs> there's so much worse music to listen yo. to now. so to my so so we i can be a uh uh an encouragement a testament to you i'm not saying that you have to do it he doesn't share his light with anyone, you mm. know. Then I'm just using his name, because 
what was the point of me thirty minutes saying, yeah. you know, I'm preaching the gospel in the air. Wow, shy I go, oh man, it's mm. gone again, you know. Yeah, so he mm, do, doesn't know. share his light with anyone. So, so it's, coming it's back, such a, a, sorry, Funk, sorry to interrupt. It's more spiritual you. than anything I hear else, you, my brother. Bro. I hear uh, you, but it's such a it's such a sort of double edged sword, two sides of the coin because. I mean, music itself. Mm. Music is such can be such a spiritual thing. It's such a blessing from from the Lord. You know, it's something that can move you spiritually. Whether it's secular, gospel, hip hop, you name it. You know, it moves us, and yeah, it and it can that it can you, it can be used in such a positive way to positive positively impact people's lives whether it be through just how how they, how they feel whether it's through charity projects whether it's mm. projects with children you know all these things that we can do with music in this world like it's That's we can't just thing. say like music must be this side and then you know righteous living is on this side it's it's a tough one bro um, can, can i think coexist? i think i think i think no um i don't compromise my gospel yeah. to a point of that's what i'm saying denying myself if, yeah. I, if i had that mentality of i can do both i would still be be envy so yeah. i don't compromise gospel bro be and i always envy. say like respectfully to everyone else out there i don't compromise it um and i was speaking to someone bro like me on that spiritual where i am right now with my faith and knowing music coming from uh, a, a heavy musical background mm. and like being into like curating these spaces, authentic spaces that's purely um, to glorify Jesus because what it is in the gospel right now, this, it's always like you always need an artist or a bishop or a prophet or someone on the fly to attract people. Yeah. And the Lord puts this thing on me, Nathan, he says that with your mind being the weapon, curate the spaces where it's purely of the glorification of Jesus. Because if it's about purely about Jesus, you don't need... Yeah, that's the marketing tool. It's Christ, bro. I don't need to put a gospel artist or anyone on a flight to attract people to glorify him. Yeah. You know, so that's where I'm at. So coming back to worship, I was speaking to someone. Satan, Satan and a third of his angels were thrown out of hell. And we right now, that's why I say I don't compromise when it comes to the gospel. No offense, gents, uh, with like the music and how yeah, beautiful yeah. music is and sharp. This is just me. Yeah. Um, there's a third of angels thrown out of heaven and right now like with us as worshipers using the music and our beautiful ease you know we are filling up that third you know in heaven because back in the satan had this thing of it he was he was he's a very powerful um angel you know his voice was a huge instrument he was the leader of the 100 percent, and he was he, yeah. th- someone it says that he was a, a, he, w- he wears this gold plate um golden plate armor vibe you know and the glory of god would shine onto this thing but the glory that shines back onto god so the literally the glorification of it was literally to shine and glorify you know our lord and savior but then of course he got thrown out so now we fill in that one third as worshipers on earth that we 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 are bold in this 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 army of worshipers to to purely if we glorify the if we worship and make the music and we in the space it's purely to glorify Christ and no one else you know mm. so music is a beautiful thing my brother of course I just don't compromise because if I did compromise I would still be in the world not saying yeah. not saying like I would rather be the light right now in my testimony yeah. Yeah. Uh, to share light to other people but I don't compromise when it comes to the gospel no though. of course I mean it, it's 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 justified because of the feeling that you had when you were when nothing was working out for you 100% so my brother yeah. that was just me and un- unto my own understanding of course. if I was compromising I would have literally dropped the album yeah mm. and say here's the gospel and force that and yeah, and yeah bro you know how bad I felt when you put the oh I'm coming back and people were inquiring Excited. yo mm. it was hectic people was inquiring and even at that moment bro I didn't know how to respond mm. I didn't know and then again, it was just an, a, a, an another um, um, indication that that wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I had to literally, bro. And now I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, I have so much joy in me, bro. Like people ask me, do I miss it? I don't miss it, bro. Wow. Wow. I don't miss it. That's that's wild. How how's it been? Because um, obviously, like you, you like you said earlier, you curated a lot of things, and you you 
you you birth a lot of careers and you responsible for a lot of guys in the industry you know you the dad yeah, you the you, father you, you were dead before being a dad <laughs> um so how's it been like with those guys you know do you do you still maintain relationships mm-hmm. with them have you spoken to most like some of them again bro coming back to <clears throat> if i speak about like the industry oaks my world none of them bro i don't have any relationship with anyone um sure. that's the crazy part yeah that's uh, ridiculous uh, there was a few throat man that reached out to me you know out of respect you know mm, yeah. um but at the end of the day i don't i don't have any relationship with anyone that's um, crazy bro because, that's wild, because they start then, <laughs> then you start to think were they only was <laughs> their relationship that? strictly because it was okay I can book funk and funk can make me money at my event and that's the that's the basis of our relationship <laughs> it was just a transactional thing do you think that's now that's coming to life I'm, I'm the reality looking of at relationships from, a, from like the social media standpoint because obviously yeah. when the news drops there's like this massive outcry like oh we're gonna miss you mm. and <laughs> can't believe this is happening it's why just so sudden. and then like sitting here and finding out that there's no if I like a bit of them off the care from these same people right. on some like hey you're still coping good you're still literally fine. committing 10 years of I your life do? to this industry we can help yeah. you with because like like for example that's a dynamic that like Calvin and I and like me and the homies have where if someone's going through a tough time or they or, or you just like have that that feeling that hey maybe there's something that yeah. I need to do in that space you know let me reach out so you're saying that you didn't have any of that since bro the breather in bro keep that keep the community um nah uh i've been in my wilderness bro i've lost everything i was saying like bro i i was drawn to a point financially all for my bank accounts <laughs> gone you know that's what i'm saying like i know i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not ashamed to say i yeah. know what it is there i know what it yeah. is they have nothing left but yo bro the uh, um the lord has been so 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 faithful like that thing coming back to will never forsake you you know um and i if i had to come literally if i had to respond to you and say i'm retired can we do the interview next week spiritually i wasn't strong yeah. enough to come here and mm. confidently deca- declare christ on a platform like and this. it would have been a different conversation be, you know, yeah. so so i'm i'm grateful that i had to someone told me that the desert is such a powerful place bro character building you know the wilderness like yeah. it builds it strengthens you mm. you know when you have nothing strengthens you in my faith you know i rely on fast and pray i'm starting the word like it strengthens me because now someone stops me in the mall yo can i have a picture so proud of you then i'm like yo john 6 verse 35 like go back and go read it jeremiah 1 verse 19 like now i can give you more than just a picture and look, looking yeah. cool i can there's a greater purpose to it so bro that's what i'm saying when my uncle takes me he said look around you you lost followers you lost the friends in the world nothing bro I just, I just but it comes back to it was bro. it was a point of like you know i understand the uh, i don't have any purpose to serve now yeah. too you can't book me you can't you know you know you can't come to me for anything you can't come to me for for certain advice because now i'm my i'm I on a new journey you i know? think that's ridiculous bro because like again but now i want to say if you guys want me to pray for you please text me bro because that's, that, that's, that's what I can. That's what I can. Because that's what I can do right now. I can literally <laughs> this, this pray for you, bro. But this is literally yeah. what I'm getting at, man. Like I think it's I think it's extremely ridiculous, bro. Because like everyone, everyone has that two, three people that one establish or whatever that they that they eternally grateful for. That's like this was my springboard. Like for me, for example, um, waiting room is one of that. Like mm. one of those springboard places for me where I was able to be there consistently, practice and hone my craft and like. And that's why I have a soft space in my heart for waiting room because, like, that's where a lot of this started for, mm. for me. Sentimental. And I know you are that for so many of these yeah, people yeah, in yeah, the yeah. game. Mm. But just hearing that, like, people that those people are not reciprocating or not even mm. like reaching out just to check in on you is wild. But then again, like, um, within my faith right now, I would, from from a positive, bro. If you didn't reach out to me back then, now you can say, yo, envy just lost <laughs> my envy. Hey. <laughs> now nah, coming back to that, we'll probably say envy. Okay, yeah, no, like, true, true, true. <laughs> yo, Nate, can you just keep me in your prayers? I'm going through something. Yeah. And then that's where I'll step in. Like, yeah, I, co- yeah. I can't serve you in this world anymore, but I can literally, because prayer is a powerful weapon, bro, and I have it. You have it. I can encourage you. Like I was saying, um, even with my brother-in-law and my best friend, you know, um, when he was like, yo, they, they were, some, it was just, now I encourage you, not with like, you know, these, 
inspirational quotes and yo don't worry hit up champ but mm. now i can let you say yo do you have a bible nah okay download the bible here's jeremiah 1 verse um 19 that says that they will fight you but they won't overcome you know so these are the things that i can share with these people now that's closest to me mm. you know mm. so i am that light now yeah basically then just a nice time just a positive um uh figure yeah. Um, just uh, oh, I want to become. I want to be that's temporary. Yeah. You know, yeah. now it's eternity, bro. Now yeah. it can lead us into something that's that's greater. Um, yeah. One so more, yeah. One more thing from my end. Um, before you obviously retired, you did a good up interview with Keezy. Um, this was in this year still, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and you obviously touched on like your team and the importance of your team. I think you guys were like seven men deep. Yeah. Um, so how is that how has the transition like affected your team and mm. where are they currently you know how are they going about things mm. now that NB Funk as a brand is no longer yeah thing? bro um, that, that that is crazy because with me finding my purpose gave them an opportunity to find their purpose also because I was very demanding um, I knew what the industry consists of I knew what it was to I needed this time I needed to play these amount of shows a month I was very demanding and mm. holding them back on you know because they they also have talents they have desires they want to study they have all these things that, that they want to achieve in life and now they are so um glued to this figure that oh, it seemed cool you know um the we traveling van everything city in it seemed cool but literally it was just holding them back from f- them fulfilling their full potential and fulfilling their purpose in life so i'm so grateful that it, it took me you know to just leave this for them to actually excel or, or so that's up. amazing like I, I i felt very bad um um at first because you know it's a it's a source of income that is not there anymore it's families that need to be fed yeah. it's you know it's children and that how, that how big was your team yeah we were like if we do like five solid seven if we bring in like um, extra hands on yeah extra and this hands. is this is a a reliable source and of income like for them literally eh? yeah. bro literally because I only used to play in Cape Town once every second, third month. Mm. We were never here, bro. Because yeah, I literally. understood the market. Mm. I understood um, what it is to be special, you know, to keep the and maintain the hype around you. Because mm. once you play um, four or five shows mm. a weekend, every weekend, Cape Town is going to be like, hey, but we can just, there's so much access to you. Yeah. Why do I need to invest in so much money? Yeah. To? So I understood the thing that I needed to be away. No access more value yeah. yeah you know so that was me i never went out you you see me like, like i told yeah. you yeah. you see me it will be like yo um i'm gonna say in the previous your envy was there that show was mad yeah but now if, if, I go, if i had to go out every week it be like, ah, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah you know so you see me they like it, it becomes like there's so much because there's no access to me like i need to take a picture with this room because mm. i don't know when i'm gonna see him again yeah. Yeah. so you maintain so much value so i understood that i needed to be out of here yeah so when i do do my own stuff i can get everyone in yeah. here basically yeah. so yeah. I, I don't i don't want to put you back into that time because you you you've shared that that part of you but there's so much that we are still a dj podcast at the end of the day and there's mm. there's a lot of people <laughs> that that uh, especially djs up and coming djs even established djs that that want to learn um you know some and there's valuable insight here as well mm. so on that topic of when you were um focusing on that exclusivity and focusing on that sort of fomo mm. for the funk brand in cape town that's something that i've i've been struggling with with myself it's one of those things is like i don't mind playing five six gigs a weekend in cape town like i really don't like i still enjoy it you yeah. know and it's it's I'm, I'm making decent money it's not affecting anything but you saw the different sort of side of it so let's talk about that a little bit you know you would be going to marmory malmesbury where else so, some days he would come and book my dicks and he's dri- and I'm, he says he's driving to like I don't know so, yeah, I think Lesotho or something <laughs> Springbok, like you know? yeah Springbok <laughs> I yeah I don't know like <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying Lesotho, but like you know what I'm saying like that was kind yeah. of your thing of just playing everywhere else okay I'm not, I'm not gonna sp- I'm not gonna speak from a DJ's point of view because mm. me not being in the industry I'm gonna speak as a business in general yes so i, I was telling um kane that here's here's what it is um so just implement this in your art i'm not going to speak for the industry itself mm. because i'm not in it yeah so i'm going to just speak speak to it in general as business 
Here's what it is. If I leave this road here, there's two bobbies, three bobbies. Why do I go to the first bobby every day? They sell the same product. They sell everything is the same. Everything is the same as the buy. You know the buy. All the buys are the same stuff. Yeah. Why do I only go to the first buy and not to buy two and three? So, when it comes to business, art, your brand, there's some sort of identity that sells, bro. Mine was my creativity, my drums. Right? That was the selling point. People buy into that, you know? So coming, I'm not saying you must go pick up drums, you must go pick a trumpet, you must come with a clopser <laughs> while you're playing. <laughs> There's just something, and it comes back to the sim- simple thing of like, that's why I say, the Lord, uh, the Bible also says in Ephesians that we've been chosen before this world, you know? So we are chosen, we've all been made differently, bro. We all have the something that is so unique about us that we don't need to be like the other two buys. There's mm. something, I'm not saying you need to go put a, you know, get an instrument, you need to come mm. with all this band just to be special. There is something about you that's so unique because we all made it. You don't look, you look different to me, to him, to we all have something different and that is the pure identity in your brand. Once you discover that, you're gone, my brother. Mm. And once you protect that, polish that, and work on that and you build that your 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 the business on the identity pure identity of of your art you're gone my brother mm. so with the identity my identity i knew so i can't say that um you wrong for playing five shows in your, in your app mm. i can't that mm. wasn't my that's not my thing that's your identity yep. you yeah. happy with it mm. shout out to you my brother but my pure and i think society Social media has made it so difficult for people to find their pure identities because what they seen out there, it's like, I need to become like an audio chapter. Yeah. I need to rap like youngster. I need to dress like Nate. I need to scratch like like Calvin. I need to play a thousand acapellas <laughs> like Kane. And society is social media has made this thing where we this has been put in front of us because this makes someone else unique yeah. uh, they're blinded from their own identity mm-hmm. so once you find then again coming back to my identity right now bro i am so happy that i know my purpose in life and in christ that's my identity that's where i'm at you know and i'm building my foundation on christ so I'm saying when it comes to the old DJing or whether you're a photographer, videographer, or fashion designer, once you have your pure identity, you don't need to be um, a drip or a David Khal. What's these guys? All these other, you, you literally, we all were made so unique in our own self being that we can literally just, if we block out the noise and d- discover our talents and really build on that thing, bro. That's yeah, the key. Yeah. But society has blinded everyone mm. with what is popular, with what's training. Numbers is a crazy thing, my brother. Numbers. That's why I'm so proud of you guys for just loving over everything and pushing the the pure art behind what you guys are trying to get out there. Yeah. You know? Don't let numbers blind you. Don't let Logan Paul's impulsive podcast because his numbers <laughs> blind you from your purpose, you know? So if I'm preaching here, someone say hallelujah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Once you have your pure identity, bro, and I think that's what helped me for 10 years yeah. in um, the entertainment industry because I knew what it is. I knew, yeah, yeah I, I knew my strengths mm. and I built my identity on my talents and, and I went with it, my brother. Of course. Yeah. You know, I must say, uh, I can see how passionate you are when you start talking about the power of Christ in your life and and the sort of new journey that you're on. I want to talk about what what your life is presently mm. and and your future plans as yeah. well now. Let's talk about that. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Yo, finally. I'm joking, but I think I've been mentioning it throughout yeah. um um the party that I'm being called for a time like this, bro to curate the authentic spaces, taking the backseat, pulling up the spaces that's purely about the glorification of Christ. I know what it is to be on the front end or something, to be on the fly, to being glorified, to be, you know, I know what it is. And the Lord just humbles me and puts me in the backseat and even in my driver's seat. So I'm at the space where, um, yo, we're starting the Christian network. I'm so excited for that. It's called Friends wow. of Jesus. A pure 
Filipino based network podcast events music purely crash based bro then again coming I'm sorry I'm not compromising like no secular nothing yeah. just pushing the gospel on this nick cuz why must myself and my viewers they put on hey bro <laughs> 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 but then again the curating I'm not on the front yeah, end of things you know um why do I need to put on the peris or s- the chicks so all these when you can do it when we where is the what is for Christ here yeah. creating the platforms for him so friends of Jesus you know you know I have a huge passion for youth bro mm. um and I think the oh you know, the lord works in mysterious ways I'm sitting one day in church and he says to me just look at the youth look at the youth leaders bro you can't have youth on a Wednesday or Friday night and come play ice breakers or games here the devil is not playing games with his kids out there bro our children is dying <laughs> drugs like there's not playing games out there mm. bro and he puts this thing on me encounter with Jesus because that's what they need the encounter with Jesus through the word and worship and fellowship so easy youth essay starting so friends of Jesus youth essay we started our sunday evening ministry called praise worship we 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 god willing is bringing that space we claim in it so we, we we the authentic spaces you know uh sunday evening services where people can gather from all churches everywhere into a space just to glorify him bro that's where i'm at i'm still keeping the in the africa trip wa- <laughs> 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 working on my fa- on my fashion and i think it's crazy bro so i started too creative years back yeah, yeah. yeah. and how this is purely my ministry bro the fact cuz i was always toying i was always out i was we, we started it but it was just like hey, you know what hey can we keep yeah. back you can we and then the low put this thing of the thing on me where it's like so okay shop you have in youth sa this boy in your community get saved uh the church this is mondays wednesdays youth sunday bro and he goes back to sit on the corner in the week mm to create yo god bless the the the, the creative behind it i receive <laughs> <laughs> but just no, the ministry is is more than church man i think it's more than church because yeah. now i have the opportunity to take that kid that found Christ and put him in the room 7 days a week bro these kids don't know how to t- write cvs they have they are talented i always say that our people they don't lack the talent they just lack the information the, the knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. i think i told this to you and then they can flourish bro yeah. so my thing with two creative is putting them in the room mm-hmm. i can bring calvin in now um and say hey here's a guy wants to scratch let's do the workshop mm-hmm. you know what i'm trying to say just put in these the 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 souls put in the youth not even youth whether you're old whether you're young whether you are just put in someone in the room mm-hmm. to spark their identity for them to become successful so my ministry with everything we do in two creative is where we at and it's crazy bro coming back to the lord won't forsake you and me seeking him first living righteously everything else will be added on to you because now i don't value money now i don't value cause now i don't value worldly things i just value my purpose in Christ and making sure that I fulfill it you know by doing my part and what he has called me for so yeah bro that's where i'm at Sorry. Hey man, I think that's I think a brilliant <laughs> way to end it here. Yeah, literally, bro. Yeah. Um, I think you've sh- you've given a lot of insight on on like your life right now, and I think it's gonna go well over for people who who again perceived everything as like shock and without knowing the backstory behind it and how you yeah. came to the decision, and it's it's very valuable for people to 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 have that insight um it's because like i said you impacted so many people you've built so many careers you're responsible for for some of the best shows in in the city in the country so i think for people to get that insight on you is going to go well for them and then also just just thank you for for being on the podcast bro like it's not an easy conversation to have you it's my know? first time no. it's my yeah. first time coming out this on is the party by far the most uh, serious <laughs> conversation <laughs> bro, like we haven't <laughs> sworn not we haven't thank you we haven't no. gossiped thank you we haven't thank you there's no we tea. no bleeps no, bleeps, no bleeps, yeah. nothing no con- no our whole identity is skewed now eh? <laughs> identity <laughs> identity <laughs> 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 but i think that, that 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 if i can encourage the two of you guys i think like um always just shit like man in the room yeah. i think yeah, like yeah. um that was me back then and that is me now people w- coming back to identity when i stepped into a room there was this thing of me that l- could light up a room that could turn heads 
but o- let it always be for a positive reason. So whether you walk into work, whether you walk into workshops, I'm not mentioning clubs or festivals. <laughs> 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 let your light always shine. You know, um, yeah. I think that's very important because um, coming back to so. Don't sweat, don't go <laughs> forward, don't because there's a lot of kids, bro. No tea. And look, I saw you uh, with this young what Sophia. Is Sophia. Yeah, simple yeah. thing. She's watching the pod. Oh, it's cool because Kremlin is. That's how he speaks. So yeah. you have so much responsibility within your identity that yeah. you need to carry. Yeah. Always yeah. just shed and be the light, my brothers. Yeah. So I wish you guys the best. Um, I'm praying for you guys. Thank uh, you. Much love, bro. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe. Show love to Nate the Curator. Yeah. All his projects. Plug all the projects quick fast. Praise, worship, Youth SA. So it's youth with triple H. And then Friends of Jesus. Watch the space. Ninth yeah. month. Too creative as well. Too creative. Yeah. Envy Africa. Something special about the ninth month. You guys have me here. Yep. The birth, you know? Yeah. Nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here. We'll something put, um, breakthrough. So thank you guys. Um, that these platforms, you know, for people. I know it's not always the 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 type of case that you have, but there's a platform yeah. Yeah. for me to declare Christ. Of course. You know, so shout out that there's a platform. Man. Yeah. And it's all about your story, you know, that's why yeah, it's yeah, your yeah, episode. Yeah. You know, you're not a guest, you're a co-host. Yeah. yeah, so soon when you guys are saved, you come to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Thank you, Nate, the curator. Thank you. Thank you for playing. Kla, you done? <laughs> okay. All right.